this video we're going to be going over an example that involves finding the values of a constant that will make a function continuous. In particular, the question we're asked is what are the values of the constant c that will make f of x continuous for all real numbers x? And here we have f of x is a piecewise defined function c squared minus x squared for x less than zero, so that's for negative values of x, and 2 minus the quantity x minus c quantity squared for x greater than or equal to zero. So that's for positive values of x and x equal to zero. So let's consider these separate chunks here. The chunk f x less than zero, we're dealing with the polynomial function c squared minus x squared. Hopefully you realize that regardless of what c is, this will still be a polynomial function with the form some constant minus x squared. And that's going to be continuous for all x. So it's certainly going to be continuous for negative numbers. For x greater than or equal to zero, we're dealing with another polynomial function. And hopefully you can tell that regardless of what c is, we will be having another polynomial function here. And it's going to be continuous for all values of x. So it's certainly continuous for those values greater than or equal to zero. So the only potentially problematic point that we have here is the point x equals zero, wherein the limit coming in from the left is going to be dictated by this function c squared minus x squared, and the limit coming in from, from the right as well as the function value is going to be dictated by this function 2 times the quantity x minus c squared. And we're going to have to show that we're going to have to pick C such that the left and right limits at zero are the same and these limits are equal to the function value at zero. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we know that we're interested in, in, at the, in the point x equals zero specifically. So let's, let's write an expression for the limit coming in from the left. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x is going to be c squared for the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of c squared minus x squared. Well, that's just going to be c squared, right? Now what about the limit as x approaches 0 from the right? It's going to be dictated by this function here. So of f of x. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x is dictated by this function here. So that's the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 2 times x minus c, the quantity squared. Well, that's just going to be, well, if, we, if we plug in 0 here, that's just going to be 2 times 0 minus c squared and 2c squared. And if it's not clear why we could just plug in 0, it, it, that's just because this is a polynomial function, so it's going to be continuous at x equals 0. So we want these functions to be, we, we want these left and right limits, excuse me, to be equal to one another. We already know that this right limit here is equal to the function value at zero. And how do we know that? Well, because this function f of x is, uh, is defined as this, is this, as this right, or as this function here, 2 times x minus c, the quantity squared for values of x greater than or equal to 0. So its value, so if you plug in 0 here, that's going to be equal to the value of the function at 0. But because that, because it's a polynomial function, it's continuous, that's also going to be equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. So we already know that f of 0 is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right show that it's continuous at zero or to figure out the value of c that'll make it continuous at zero we just have to set these left 
and write limits equal to one another. Well, that just amounts to setting c squared equal to 2c squared. Well, what value, what's the value of c that will allow c squared to equal 2c squared? Well, if we subtract c squared from both sides, we get 0 equals c squared or c squared equals 0. Well, if something squared equals 0, the something itself also has to be 0. So this implies that c equals 0. And remember, these three dots arranged kind of in a triangle just mean therefore. So c equals 0 is the value of c that will make this function f of x continuous for all values of x. Remember, we started out by noting that we know it's continuous for all values other than 0 because these are polynomial expressions. Both uh, chunks of this function are polynomial expressions. So they're going to be continuous wherever they are. They're going to be continuous for all values of x. The only issue is we have different chunks, different polynomial chunks right at x equals 0. So we need c such that such that the f of 0 is equal to the limit as we approach 0 from the left dictated by this function is equal to the limit as we approach 0 from the right dictated by this function.